Okay, in this section of the lesson, we're going to discuss the experience section of your resume. Now, when I mention experience, it's truly anything that you have done that demonstrates your qualifications for the position you're applying to. So that could include a job, whether a part-time job or a professional job, an internship, a co-op, even volunteer experience sometimes if it's in a professional capacity. And so in this part of the lesson, we'll discuss both how to organize and format your experience, as well as how to describe the skills, the qualifications you gain through your experience when writing those bullet points in this part of the resume. So to get started, you can see on this slide, there's several different points that relate to organization. So depending on the type of resume you're writing, if you're composing a chronological resume, which is the most common type today, you wanna to list your experience in reverse chronological order. So your most recent experience would go first, followed by your next most recent, so on and so forth, compared to a functional resume where you're gonna organize your experience based on its level of importance in relation to the job you're applying to. Now, with that said, you'll see that there's also different headings that you can use for experience. So truly, you can have more than one experience section. You could have a related experience section, and that way that bumps up some of the most important experience you have in relation to the job, and then additional experience afterwards or work experience afterward. The other key thing to think in mind, or the other key point, excuse me, to keep in mind when you're considering this section is that you want to list whatever is going to dis demonstrate your qualifications, but not anything that would dissuade from them. So you do not need to include every job on your resume. Now, if that means that there may be gaps in your experience, that's something that I would really recommend you come and talk with me or career services about in different ways to manage those gaps. But now you'll see on this slide, there's several different samples that go to organizational options. So you can see on the left here with the Anna Marie example, we have a general experience section. So just work experience because this individual starting out, they recently graduated from high school at this time frame, and then they have mainly work experience. So they'll bump that up and discuss that in reverse chronological order. Compared to the option on the right, this individual is a bit further along with their education, and so they've gathered a wealth of related experience already. So they formatted the related experience section, followed by a clinical experience section, and then work experience. So even though work experience is still current, they're able to keep it lower on the resume because they've created this, these three different experience sections. So those are some important options to keep in mind when you're considering how to format your experience. Now when you are actually listing your experience you want to be sure to include your job title the employer name the employer location which includes the city and state and then the dates of employment now you'll also want to list strong bullet points for any experience you have that you can describe skills outcomes accomplishments that you achieved through that experience that relate to the job you're applying to and so we'll talk more about writing those bullet points momentarily, but essentially they will begin with some strong action verbs. Whenever possible, you want to quantify your experience. So if you raised a specific amount of money, that would be impressive. List that amount of money if you were doing some volunteer work. You want to make sure that you aren't writing complete sentences here either. These are really quick statements to highlight your experience, your qualifications. And so that means no periods and you can remove personal pronouns. So instead of stating something like I achieved, just get right to achieved to start that bullet point. And then specify the most relevant points first. So think about the most impressive thing you've done and make sure that's the first bullet point that we see listed there. And so you'll see that this example is here. And the other key thing to keep in mind is consistency. So we've got related experience is the heading. We have the employer name, city, state. And you'll see in that next experience, we still have the city, state with Illinois spelled out. If you wanna abbreviate the state, make sure that you're doing that every time. The dates are perfectly aligned too. And information is listed in the same order for each of these experiences. And then you'll see that the title, that this individual held in these positions that is bolded as well in this example. You have options of how to format this, but make sure you're making consistent choices whenever you're listing out the content on your resume. 
Now, let's talk about writing bullet points because this is one of the most difficult parts of the resume, in my opinion. So whenever you're writing a bullet point, again, you wanna think about a skill and especially transferable skills. So something that you can show will apply to the position that you are trying to achieve. And then also any accomplishments or any outcomes that are noteworthy. So if we think of, for example, the position of a camp counselor, you don't wanna highlight the task that you did. So as a camp counselor, you would have played with children and made meals for them but you may not be applying for a position where that's relevant. So instead, highlight a skill like leadership, which is a transferable skill. Supervise approximately 15 adolescents by facilitating age-appropriate activities that encourage learning and development. So instead of having that task-oriented bullet point, we're moving to highlighting a skill while still discussing the same content. It's still talking about overseeing children, but we're using a strong action word like supervise that immediately relates to leadership. We're quantifying it to show the impressiveness of managing that many little kids, and then still highlighting some of the specific details and showing how you were focused on their overall well-being, which is important too. Same idea goes if you were a server somewhere. So instead of just stating serve food to customers, how can that become a transferable or soft skill? So thinking about customer service or communication, we could instead say something like provided excellent customer service while serving patrons healthy meals and adjusting food options for individuals with dietary restrictions. So again, we're highlighting that transferable skill. We're showing a little bit of our personality in here too and our willingness to engage with others and consider their needs, which is always good to highlight as well. So think about those strong action words that you can start with, quantify whenever possible, and most importantly, move from discussing a task to instead discussing the skill that you gained in a position.